Just as Yannick Sinner wrapped up his second ATP Masters title of the year at Cincinnati, on the heels of it has come a news of the 24-year-old testing positive for a banned substance not once, but twice. This was during March, right after Indian Wells ATP event where Sinner lost in the semi-finals. The substance found in his system was clostable, a substance that helps in the enhancement of muscle mass. But Sinna was let off by the International Tennis Integrity Agency, or the ITIA. They concluded that Sinner's positive dope test was unintentional. There was no major punishment, not even a suspension. The only inconvenience the world number one faced, the prize money of 325,000 US dollars and the 400 points that Sinner had accrued upon reaching the semi-finals of Indian Wells, that's been taken away. This is what Sinner said after the incident. I will now put this challenging and deeply unfortunate period behind me. I will continue to do everything I can to ensure I continue to comply with the ITIS anti-doping program. I have a team around me that are meticulous in their own compliance. Sinner surely evaded getting suspended, but the tennis community wasn't too pleased with the verdict. There has been a huge uproar where Sinner's fellow competitors have lashed out at this decision. Everybody was furious that Sinner wasn't punished for testing positive, not once but twice. But let's be honest, it's a serious offence. It's a doping offence. Athletes are bound to react and, they, and express their anger, especially when it's someone like Sinner being involved. He's the world number one and he's just won an ATP title. He needs to set an example. But ITIA's verdict came after many discussions, after interrogations, upon which they agreed to Sinner's defence. Sinner claimed that the banned substance had entered his system as a result of contamination from his fitness trainer. Sinner said his trainer, Umberto Ferrara, had a minor wound during the Indian Wells tournament and to heal the cuts, Umberto had used a spray on the wound that had contained the banned drug, Clostable. During the same period, Umberto used to give Sinner massages, which transferred the drug into Sinner's body. That's Sinner's defence. Given this, ITIA concluded that they were convinced it wasn't the Italian player's fault. But here's the shocking part. In Italy, the drug is present as an anabolic steroid in various medical creams and sprays. This is a very common drug used by Italians to treat cuts and wounds. And the drug is so common that it is available without any prescription and at a price as cheap as 13.2 euros. So in Italy, getting a healing spray with clostable in it, as a banned substance, a steroid, is as common as getting a candy bar. Which is the main reason why as many as 38 Italian athletes tested positive for the same banned drug in the past five years alone, starting from 2019. And at the 2016 Rio Olympics, in fact, two Italian athletes, volleyball player Orsi Toth and sailor Roberto Caputo, failed the pre-games doping test thanks to Clostable. The two who had already qualified for the Games had to miss the Olympics because of this. The drug, though, didn't just miraculously make its appearance in the last six years. It dates back to the 1980s, commonly used by Germans and unknowingly by many like the decorated Olympian Birgit Dressel. Even top German clubs like VFB Stuttgart and SC Freiburg Back then, it was used in the form of injections or oral consumption, but in the last decade alone, this banned drug has made its way to Italy and Italian sport in a simpler form, used via creams or sprays. And thus, the series of positive tests followed. From football to tennis and even basketball, several Italian athletes have tested positive for the same banned substance. And just like Sinner claims, these athletes too didn't take the drug knowingly. The intake was unintentional. 
Matilde Pauletti got it when she petted her dog who had been sprayed with a medicine containing clostable. Mariano Tamaro got it through a medical spray and Ricardo Morascini got it by his girlfriend who used the medical spray that had the banned substance. But all of them still faced the consequences of this. And here's the thing, even though Clostable is very commonly available, the packaging still comes with a warning sign, a big red cross saying this contains doping substance. It's hard to miss. And given the drug is so commonly available and it's in WADA's list of banned substances, shouldn't athletes be that little bit more cautious? This is the very reason why the tennis community is furious. That Sinner was let go off without facing any consequences of failing this test twice. Because just like how Clostable is now commonly available in Italy, another banned substance, Maldonium, was commonly available in Russia. The same drug that saw Maria Sharapova being banned for two years. And back in 2016, when Sharapova was indeed banned, hundreds of cases involving Russian athletes at the center of Meldonium drug emerged. Which is why tennis players are shocked with ITIA's verdict at this point. Now, I understand that Sinner says it entered his bo body through no fault of his. But it still was there. Sure, in small quantity, as reports say, but he tested positive twice for it. A performance-enhancing drug. Here's what I feel. You cannot have different yardsticks for different athletes. If many Italian sportspersons before Yannick Sinner were punished for the same offence, faced consequences of an unintentional consumption or transference, shouldn't Sinner too then have faced similar punishment? Does his status as a tennis player, a world number one in fact, defeat all the rules, even though it was unintentional? What do you think? Let us know. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree. A News 18 Network initiative. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished.